Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Sorry it's been a while. It's just been real hectic on my end. Uh, but today we're going to be taking a look at no recall and no spread in particular games. Now, just, I just want to start off by saying this is by no means the way to do it. Okay, this is a way you can possibly do it. Each game varies. It's, and that's kind of the reason I wanted to go through the super jump and the teleport tutorials because I wanted you to get familiar with having to look for these hard to find values and things of that nature because that's exactly what we're going to be doing with no recoil and my method is just a lot of trial and error but I, you know you can get into the right places uh, to do it so that's what we're going to be doing I'm going to try to do it for two different games if I've got the time I'm going to first we're going to try to find no recoil and no spread in the uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 and uh, also I'll try for Far Cry 3 that I got over here as well. Both of them have uh, similar mechanics as far as the uh, weapons operate. So I want to take a look at those and show you a technique you can use. Now later on in the future we'll look at more techniques, some values and other places that we can search for these things because uh, there are other games where this technique is just not going to work. Okay, so I'll just be straight up with you, but you can give it a try. This is usually the first technique I try in trying to find no recoil and no spread. And we'll go ahead and take a look at this first technique later on in the future. We'll take a look at more techniques, all right? So bear with me. Let me bring everything up. Okay, so brought the game up. Let's go ahead and have that loading up. Well, I'll find my chamber value right quick. I'm just going to load up a couple of cheats that I got on the side here. I'm just going to copy my chamber ammo and I'm going to clear the list. There we go. And I'm going to paste that. Alright, so let me find the chamber value right quick. I know this top one up here is controlling the chamber. This one right here is controlling my inventory ammo. I need both of them, but they're pretty close together, so I'll just use both. Let's go ahead and paste that in. Make that readable and writable. Let's do the scan. Good. Now I'll disassemble this memory region, and that's the location. Let's go ahead and get back to the game. Just going to add that to the list. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. This is my chamber ammo. This is what controls my reload. As long as that stays full and doesn't go to zero, I'll never reload. So that's no reload right there. It's always your chamber value. So we know that that pertains to the gun that we're using. So we want to go to that location, and we're going to be using this right here, memory view. Okay, so we want to go to this location, and usually they're pretty much all together in a lot of games. Not every game, but a lot of games they are. So let's browse this memory region and it'll carry us right to the top, right where our address is. You see that right there, A4, A4, and that's our value 14, which is E in hex. And I know this right here is my, let me add that to the list, change that to 4 bytes. And I know that's my inventory value, I don't want that going down either, so as long as I have those two frozen. We're good to go. All right, the very first thing you want to do is you want to notice what's controlling it, how's it shooting. And if you look, every time we aim, we get a cursor. That little aiming cursor right there. When we start to shoot, it's small. And it's pretty accurate when it's small, all right? Well, as we keep shooting, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. See that? So we know that that's controlling it somehow. You see how sporadic it gets? It's going left, right, up, down, all areas of a circle, like a compass, so to speak. North, south, east, west, southeast, northeast, all that mess. All right? So we know we got a lot of things that are affecting our accuracy. So how do we find that? Well, that's the hard part. What I normally do is, this is the first technique I use. Here's our chamber value, is I'll go down and up around that I'll mark that location and I'll just go up and shoot and see if anything starts changing look we, we came to it right away it's on up the, up the list a little bit but 
You see that? And then when we shoot, we see a bunch of values that are just going crazy. You see that? Well, all those values, normally you'd want to try to test. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's separated by these little yellow lines here. You see that? And these are separated by 8 bytes. That's to kind of help you count, but... It also keeps those addresses together, if you see. If you notice the very top right there, we got a, a three right now, then it's changing to one. Put our gun down, it changes to two. So that's obviously a flag controlling when we're shooting, when we're holding the gun, when we're not. And when it's one, when we're, it's actually firing. So we know that that's some type of a switch or flag value. That's... Uh, setting to let the other values know that they're to go so we don't really want to mess with that what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm going to count the first four bytes over all that's part of the same number four bytes okay and what we're going to do is right click on the leftmost byte and we're going to find out what writes to this address we know that this is one of the ones that is sporadically counting as we're shooting so we just want to give it a try and see what's going on with it so, and we see two locations popping up, so we probably have to knock out two locations. Both of these are writing to that address. And you'll notice when we go down these lists, you'll see that they're really close together, everything that we need to knock out. So I'm going to replace that with a code that goes does nothing. And I'm also going to go to this location and replace it with a code that does nothing and I want to see if it affects anything ah you see that look at our cursor look how big it is but it's not moving it's just open you see that that definitely affected our cursor so let's add this address to the address list put it on four byte we can possibly put it on float yeah I think it is a float value yeah it is a float value it's using the XMM registries so let's change that to zero see if there's any kind of a difference look at that look how small it is now so we see that's affected our cursor so we now have our cursor value But it's still kind of shooting a little sporadically around, but you still got recoil and you got a little bit of spread in there. We know that cursor was controlling the spread. So we want to see if we can find that north-south variable that's kicking it to make it jump around. Well, to save ourselves some time, I'm, if we knocked out every single one of these we're counting, you'd have a perfect shot every time. It would be so smooth. And normally that's what I would normally do but that just that's gonna take a lot of work and I'm not gonna do that I know I need that one right now that's controlling my cursor so that's controlling the spread so now we just need to control the kick which is the recoil and when you go knopping 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 you're gonna eventually come down here and you say okay well what's this one do you'll find out what's writing to it let's close this one down no wait 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 let's not do that Let's stop that one, but we'll keep it up, because we're going to need that. Alright. And then you're going to shoot. You're going to see only one address come up to it. And we're going to knock that one. It's not quite as sporadic, but it looks like there's another also with it. So we know that that's the one we want to keep. So we want to just stop it, don't close it, and move it on over here out of the way. Or you can set it to a bookmark, it doesn't matter. We want to go to the next one over. We want to count four bytes from where we just were to right here. If you want to, you can add that address to the list that we just knocked. Uh, change it to float, I think. 
we can set that at zero. And you see it's, it's a lot better than it was. It's still got a little sporadic in it. So that's why we want to get the next four bytes and see what that does. Same thing. Nothing different. We want to find out what writes to it. We see the other one was A0, this one's A4, and I bet you that's on down here somewhere. Yep, look, right here. If I was to click on that, showing disassembler, boom, look where it takes me, right here. Let's replace that with a code that does nothing. And let's add that one to the address list. Put that on float. And we'll put that one on zero as well. And it's still kicking around a little bit. That's because there are other factors in there controlling it. So if you wanted, you could keep going on down and hitting the others. And like I say, the more you hit, the more you're taking away from it to uh, shoot sporadically and everything. But you got to be careful. You don't know what values are affecting what it's a trial and error process there's nothing more to it than that but you see right here if we go not these three op codes we got a fairly accurate shot and if we wanted to make it more smooth we could just go do the next one over what writes to that address make sure to stop this one move it over here out of the way so we can get back to it And we see that's an A8. And there's a lot of it writing to it. So I, we just want it to where it's not writing anything to this address. So we'll add that to the address list. Down on a float. And just go not one and make sure that that doesn't write to it. And it doesn't. And look at that. Oh, wow. It's not sporadic at all. Look how straight that is. Accurate. Cursor's not moving out. So now you got another one. You can also add that one to the list. So let's just quickly. I'm not going to go do all of these. I'm just going to do a couple to show you how to uh, put those together. Say so we're ready to write our script. Those are, that's good enough for us. We want to go back and restore with the original code. So we start with the first one. we we'll are go to auto assemble, template, AOB injection. Call it whatever you want. I'm calling this accuracy. Accure one for accuracy. You can either do it one of two ways. You can inject code or you can just knock it out this way. It does not matter. However you want to do it. They both do the same thing. But we're just going to do it the easier way. Well, that's not the easier way. It's the longer way, but it's the more correct way, I should say. And we know we need to knock out these five bytes. Remember what the knock out byte is? That's right. It's nine zero. So five. We're not deallocate. We don't need to deallocate any memory. So we're just going to assign that to the current cheat table. And boom. We just go make sure it works by clicking on it. Should knock out all those bytes. It does. And then we go to the next one. Do the exact same thing. And we're we're going to combine that with the other one. A will be injection. I'll call that Acura 2. And we're just going to do the same thing just quickly. Just like that. Oh, wait. Hang on. It didn't go to that locale. I think I just knocked that one out. Hang on. Oh, wait. No, I didn't take. I didn't put it back. That's what I did wrong. My bad. Store it through the original code. There we go. All right, now let's call that one accurate too. And 
just want to do this quickly so I can get to the other game right quick. But you get the idea of what I'm talking about. It's a trial and error process. There's uh, Sometimes this method is not the best way to do it. It's the first method, I would say, to do it. If you can't find it this way, then you're going to have to go find other values that may be related to your weapons and go to the dissect data structure and other places like that. That we'll do at a later date, okay? All right. So let's uh, assign that to the current cheat table. All right. So it knocked that one out. So we know that affects our cursor. When we knock those out together. That was the second code. But ha this is how you combine them. And you would go do the same with all the others, okay? Real easy. All you need to do is right here. You can put it up here or you can put it underneath. It doesn't matter. You can put it right there or if you want to make it more neat, you can come put it up here. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that you put on the disable as well. Then you only need one. Like I say, normally what I do is I go make it look neater by just cutting that and putting it up here. It'll still perform the same functions. It doesn't matter. You can just leave it down there. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. And just click OK. I'm so sorry about that. I keep forgetting about that darn hotkey and it keeps turning my recorder off on me. So after you got it cleaned up the way you wanted and things of that nature, you can you can put things together, make it more neat. It'll still function the exact same way. It does not matter. And, you know, we got those two together. That's how you combine them. And then we turn it on. And that should be like the cursor. That's the cursor one. And it is. See? That affected the cursor. And then I'd go do the kick. And then I'd add those to the same script. And then we would just label it uh, uh, no recoil. No spread accuracy however you spell it and, but you get the idea what I want to do is I want to go on over to the uh, Far Cry 3 see if we can get that through that one quickly just to show you it's the exact same technique okay so I'll be right back with you okay so I brought up Far Cry 3 let's go ahead and find our ammo value now this only has an ammo value it don't have a separated chamber versus uh, inventory ammo because your ammo is in the gun and that's it as far as I know I think it does carry in an item but I don't think it has anything to do with your reload so all we really need for this one is the one specific ammo code so let's go ahead and make that readable and writable and find that location and we're going to find out, uh, excuse me, disassemble. And let's find out what's writing to that address. Oops, I I was inside. Let's go outside. Going back over here. There we go. All right, so let's shoot off around. We want to bring that over here. Let's go ahead and freeze that value. And automatically, let's go ahead and browse to this memory region. We can see right here. Here's our address for our ammo, if you notice. And that's the value 1D, which is 29 in decimal. 1D in hex. And we're basically looking for the same type of things that we were looking for in the last video. Let me move that down a little bit. Ah, here we go. We're right here at it. We didn't have to go up as far this time. Now, I want you to take a look. I want you to take a look. See if you notice the kind of a similarity from the last game. These are two completely different games, but do you notice 
any kind of similarities going on with how they're being stored and what's counting and everything like that you kind of recognize it's like a pattern almost in both games well first off we want to know how it's shooting we do see a cursor there but it completely disappears when we aim so it doesn't look like it comes back but if we shoot we notice that we're going straight up and it does kind of shoot erratically all the way up so let's start from the bottom I'm not moving the mouse at all I'm doing is pressing the fire button so we see it does kind of go up so that's what we need to find and that's what we're going to do so we just need to just pick a spot and start looking and what I do is I like to look at certain values that are counting as I'm shooting those are the ones I hit first alright this is the one that's staying more consistent for right now so let's go take a look at that I'm going to do the same thing far most and find out what writes to that address we see something's already writing to it alright let's go over to it and we need to add it to the address list because we may need it to register zero as well so add it to the address list we'll make that a float most of these will be float values by the way these are these are like your game mechanics usually they're going to be stored in floats and doubles and things like that just like the fly hack and everything so what I want to do is I want to make that completely zero I want to knock that out place with a code that does nothing let's go take a look see what happens not really much but as we can see it's still counting right here so it's not really staying at that number so uh, knocking that out didn't really do anything or did I knock it out no it's, it's, it's still being written to so there's more going on with that code than what meets the eye but that's okay that's alright what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of these other values we're going to jump over to here do the exact same thing ah there's where I was looking for take a look at this you'll see this a lot this this when you start seeing things like this it's loading and then storing in 04 then 08 usually those are all in relation with each other and I can about guarantee you we are in the right section we need to be and usually when I see something like this now this is just me is I, I already start manipulating those so I'm gonna go ahead and stop that as it is right there and uh, let's find out what addresses are being wrote to that. Put that on float. Ah, look at that. Same exact address. So we, we can do it right here as well. So that's what's writing to it. I don't know why it didn't pick it up. I, I don't know. But this is, this is what we wanted right here. Oh, take a look. He's not going up anymore. He's just going right and left, but not up. If I move him up and move him back down, he still doesn't go up. Still kind of shooting sporadic, but now we're in a location where we can really mess with it. So what was that other one? What was it, 04? Right here. Let's add that to the address list that on a float let's uh, knock that one out make sure we put these on zero that may or may not have something to do with it I don't know 
Let's do it. I bet you if we went on down this list, just hitting each one of these. That's zero already, so we can just go ahead and knock that one. Look at that. When we aim it, so when we're aiming, we got a completely accurate shot, no movement. So that means it's being stored in two locate. Look at that. When we're aiming, one little bullet hole. Let me get over here. Look at that. Now that's accurate right there. That's what you want. That's accurate. So there's obviously two locations. One when we're shooting like this, where it's all over the place, and one when we're aiming. So this is the location right here where we're at now of when we're aiming. So that means there's another location when we're not aiming. And it could be on down here or it could be in another place in memory. I don't know. <clears throat> but I just wanted to show you how you can find those via your ammo values or your chamber values. You really want to get your chamber values where you have no reload. When you find no reload or what's controlling the no reload, about 70%, 75% of the time, you're going to find your recoil, your accuracy, your uh, spread. And uh, later on, we'll get into other techniques to find these things as well. But I just wanted to just show you the technique. And like I say, there really is no technique to it. It's just trial and error. You see how straight we are now. Take a look. Aha, cheat the game, fellas. But like I say, uh, we could still keep going and trying to find the other location to when we're not aiming and knock those out as well. Make sure or have them right zero all the time. There's so many ways you can do it. It's really a trial and error process. But you kind of get more into game hacking when you're getting into more regions other than just dissect data and just looking up regular values up here all the time. You can use one value to tag into other areas of hacking and find other things that are useful to you so you know they all usually string together somehow if you know how to look for them know where to look and uh, know what's going on with the system when you saw a shoot you saw the similarity and how it structured it almost looked the same as the other so you know keep things like that in mind and you'll start noticing these patterns in a lot more games and you know where you can look and go play around in it you know but I hope this helped you, and later on we'll get into some more techniques of, you know, of finding it more accurately and stuff. That gets a little bit harder, but, you know, get your feet wet in memory view. I'd like to jump more into this memory view later to do more things, and we'll learn a lot more about it. And uh, this will really help us out. It'll help you out in a lot of other things, too, as far as programming, hacking, and other areas as well. And I also want to throw a shout out to my great friend, Sneaky Mofo. He's got two great lessons he's came out with in the past uh, couple of weeks. Go check them out. It's really great stuff. Shows you how to compare out when you cannot find a compare or an offset differences or stable offsets and dissect data structure. It's a great lesson. I have many people asking me that on a daily basis. So I'm pointing you in that direction. It's a great lesson. Go check it out. Also go check my friends over at guidedhacking.com. That's guidedhacking.com. They go over C++, C Sharp, IDA Pro, all the way into uh, from beginner to advanced areas of game hacking. Those guys really know their stuff. Uh, they go well beyond cheat engine into other factions of game hacking. Go check them out. You can go look for your questions to be answered there as well. 
Also, come join us over at this Cheat the Game Facebook page. I'll have all these links down there in the description for you. Uh, it is a closed group now, but you come join us. We will approve you to come on in there. You can see all the great content. You can come ask your questions there. Great game hackers hang out there as well. That will be happy to help you. All right, guys, I'm out of here. You guys take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, doesn't mind cheating you. Take care now. I would like to find that.